Good morning. morning. Welcome to all of you who have joined us as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us pray this Mass for each other's intentions. Please remember at Mass all who are ill, confined to their homes, in hospitals or nursing homes, as well as those on our parish prayer list. St. Mary's Labor Day raffle winners are posted online. Please place your Sunday collection in the offertory bins located at the main entrance of the church and in the parish center. There are signs posted above these bins. Next weekend, we will have Commitment Weekend for the 2020 Bishop's Fund Appeal. In the coming week, you will receive a letter and brochure from Bishop Lavalley asking you to join him in supporting the 2020 Bishop's Fund Appeal. Please pray about your decision and consider making a pledge or one-time gift. You are invited to bring your gift next week for Commitment Weekend and place it in the collection bin or return it to Bishop Lavalley in the envelope provided. If you are an envelope user, please pick up your envelope pack from the table in the parish center. For ease in finding your envelope pack, they are alphabetized. Holy Communion will be distributed after the celebration of Mass. And the Mass today is offered for Delia Gagne. Our entrance hymn is, O Bless the Lord My Soul, which can be found on your leaflet. Please stand. the Lord my soul. Good morning, everybody. Let us begin our day by praying in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness for the times we have failed to live as brothers and sisters in Christ, asking God for for his uh, grace to be the people that he wants us to be. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. sisters, the Lord be with you. Listen now to our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, Not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think Peter this morning asks a a, a very important question, a, a question I think that maybe all of us have asked one time throughout our lives. How do I forgive my brother? What do I do What do I do if someone very close to me, a brother, a sister, maybe even a parent, hurts me? And Jesus Jesus comes back and says, you need to forgive your brother from your heart. How do we do that? Um, Not too long ago, uh, uh, a friend of mine, a young man, 
shared with me how he had to reconcile with his mom. So you heard him pretty bad. You see, many years ago, when my friend was just seven years old, he was riding in the back seat of the car right uh, in between his brothers. And his mother's driving down the road. And she was feeling very distraught at this moment in her life. You see, her husband, their dad, had just left them. And like I said, they're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, she gets really angry and upset, and she turns around and she smacks my friend in the face. And she starts yelling at him. And she says, In you. I, even, I never even wanted you. I only had you just to keep your father with me. But he's left. He's left us anyway, and now I hate you. Now you could just imagine how terrible my, my young friend felt at seven years old. And that image, that image was burned in his memory for years and years and years. And over the years, since then, she reinforced those feelings on my young friend by by making him feel terrible, you know, pointing out the faults that he committed over the years. But after a while, he just had enough. He couldn't take it anymore. And my friend told me, you know, Father, I can't tell you how many times in the last 23 years I relived that experience in the backseat of my, of my mom's car when she slapped me and told me that she hated me and blamed me for, my, for dad leaving us. Probably thousands of times. But recently, I did this. I put myself in my mom's shoes. Here she was, a high school graduate with no money, no job, with a family to support, and I realized how lonely and depressed she must have felt. And I thought of the anger and the pain that, that must have been there. And I thought about how much I reminded her of the failure of her young hopes for her, for her own life. And so just the other day, I decided to, to visit with her and talk to her. I told her that I, that I understood her feelings and, and that I loved her just the same. And you know what she did? She broke down and cried and wept. And we wept in each other's arms for what seemed to be hours. And you want to know something? It was the beginning of a new life. A new life for me, for her, and for both of us. Now right there. Right there, I think, is, is the perfect example of the healing power of forgiveness. Shakespeare once said that, that forgiveness is twice blessed. What does that mean? That means it's a blessing for the one that we forgive, and it's also a blessing for the forgiver. Now, like I said earlier, I think we all know how it feels to be hurt by somebody else. And it hurts even more by someone close to us, whether it's a brother, a mom, or a sister, or a coworker, or a friend. And we all know, you know, th- th- those feelings, those emotional feelings that we get when we know that we're going to have to encounter that person, whether at, at, at work, or at school, or on the streets, or maybe here in church. You know, our our hearts, they start bumping, pounding in our chests. We feel our blood pressure rise. We ask ourselves over and over again, okay, what am I going to to say? What am I going to do when I see this person? Maybe at church or at work or a family function. What do we do? Well, I think that young man did the perfect thing. when we know that we have to forgive somebody and to get over that emotional block to be able to, to forgive from the heart as Jesus calls us to do. 
The thing that made the difference for my friend was that he had to change his perception of his mother. And when he did that, he no longer saw her as this terrible person who did a terrible thing to him many, many years ago. Rather, he saw her as a, as a high school graduate who had no money, no job, a family to support. But once he saw her in this new light, he also saw how lonely and depressed she was. And right there, right there is the key that gave him the, the, the ability to forgive his mom from his heart. If we need to forgive our enemies, we gotta take an extra effort to see them as Jesus sees them. How does Jesus see them? Jesus sees them not as terrible people, but as frightened, hurt children of his father, our father. And isn't that what we pray for each and every time we pray the our father? Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's what we pray for each and every time we pray those words that Jesus taught us. To forgive those who trespass against us from our hearts. But it takes time. It may take days, it may take weeks, it may take months, it may take years but we gotta do it. Jesus tells us we gotta do it. And that's what all of our readings ask us to do this weekend. To look at ourselves, to look at our relationships. And if our relationships aren't what they should be, then we have to take the extra initiative to change them. Just like my friend did. And I guarantee you, if we open our hearts and do this, it will lead to a a whole new, beautiful life for us, for those that we forgive, and for all of us. And that's what it means to forgive our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, our friends from the heart. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us turn to our Heavenly Father with all of our needs, praying for the needs of our world, our church, and for each other. For the church, 
May the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations locked in disagreement, that they break the ancient bond of hatred and seek healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being called by God to be instruments of his love and mercy in this world, that they will have the courage and generosity to say yes and receive the support of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our grandparents, living and deceased, in thanksgiving for all blessings we have received from them and for the role they played in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are holding on to past hurts and grievances, may the Lord give them the grace to forgive. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Delia Gagne, may they know the loving embrace of our merciful Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we join together in prayerful support of the Bishop's Fund Appeal so that Christ's message will be shared across the Diocese of Ogdensburg. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we ask you to hear us and answer us in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory is there, him is there, there's a wideness in God's mercy, which begins on the bottom of your leaflet and continues on the reverse side. Let us stand to pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, in that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Proclaim your death. 
Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our Bishop, and we, your faithful people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. In, peace, in silence now, let us pray for peace, peace in our world, in our families, in between one another. God who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Bringing up your sacrifices and
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The celebration is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. And have a wonderful week, everybody. Behold, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is God of day and God of darkness, which is on your leader.